Hey, 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 family. It is your girl, Chef Evelyn here, and I am back for another video. And listen, I'm so excited because enrollment for the Fun Food Academy is open. It's only going to be open for seven days because we start class on Monday, January the 20th. And listen, I'm so excited to bring you another video and tell you the truth because the folks don't lie to you okay but if you have been watching these videos and you're like yes girl i am ready to join the fun food academy then go to funfoodacademy.com aroma is now open and uh, listen i have made the investment in your health super easy super approachable and super affordable because it's always an investment in your health and never an expense, okay? So, listen, let's get right into it because, you know, I want to spill the tea, the juice, the water, the things up in here today and tell you why they lied to you. Healthy eating is not hard, okay? I'm going to tell you the truth because I feel like you deserve to know. I feel like I'm the one to tell you the truth, okay? And so, here's the thing. I recently did a podcast about six lies they, uh, about healthy eating that you've been told. And so if you've missed that, you can always go to the website or wherever you um, stream and listen to that podcast. And this is going to go right in line with that because they, the, 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 people, the people done lied, okay? They done sold you a wolf ticket, all right? And um, I apologize that you have been lied to. But we're going to correct that today. Okay, are you ready? All right, let's get into it. So, listen. Healthy food can actually be fun. Okay, they lie. People have told you that in order to eat healthy, you've got to join a food gang. You've got to get on these super restrictive diets. You've got to go get your blood taken to figure out what kind of foods you can eat. You've got to, like, you've got to do all these things. You've got to become an environmentalist. You know, you've got to hate people who don't eat like you. You've got to be a food elitist. You've got to spend a lot of money. You've got to meal plan 30 days in advance. They, they've told you all these crazy things, and I'm, those are all lies. I'm going to tell you right now, those are all lies, okay? There's only a few things that you need. And you if you've been watching the videos, I've been giving you tons of tips. And, like, if you've been enjoying these videos, then I know you're going to love the Fun Food Academy because we break it down on how to actually make it fun, how to actually make it sustainable, how to get out of this place of fear of food and be more informed about food and make your healthy eating game plan from there and beyond. So, listen... They said healthy food can be fun. First of all, who is they? But anyway, they said it. Not true. I I have a great time with food. Like, I think that's why I named it the Fun Food Academy and not like the Healthy Food Academy. Because the two are not different to me. They're the same. Okay? So the first lie you've been told is that healthy food is not fun. And that's not true. The reality is, is that you need to embrace what I call defensive and offensive eating. It's kind of like sports. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to you like I'm a sports expert because I'm not. I was, I, was, I was in a band when I was in high school, okay, and in college. You know, like I was in National Honor Society. You know what I'm saying? I was in a French club. You know, Parlez-vous Francais. Like, but I don't really speak French. Um... Uh, or read it even though I had six years of it but that's a whole different story listen they lied you have to embrace defensive and e offensive eating and most diets are just about elimination and the way I view defensive and offensive eating is what are things that I am going to decrease in my diet and maybe not necessarily eliminate to get me closer to my goals? And then what are things that I'm going to incorporate into my lifestyle to get me closer to my goals? You got to like, and so when you listen, there's 5,000 people telling you what you can't have, what you can't eat, whatever. I'm not really that person. As a matter of fact, I think you get to choose what those things are based on your current situation, your medical situation, the way you live, the way you work, the way your family eats, all that kind of stuff. I think you get to choose that. Okay. And I like to really focus on what am I going what what am I going to eat more of? That sounds more fun to me. What do I get to eat more of? Okay? What do I get to enjoy more of? That sounds more fun to me. Okay? So, you have to embrace defensive and offensive eating. And then I think it's about having a game plan versus just randomly trying to pull stuff out the air. Like, can you imagine 
this is an extreme example, but let's say you your your decision on the way to make money in your life is that you are going to be an employee. Awesome. Can you imagine if every day you woke up and you were trying to figure out what job you were going to do that day? Every day. Like every day it was like, oh, what, 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 what kind of work am I going to do today? Like that's exhausting and that's stressful. Whereas it's just a no brainer because you know where you're going every day. You know what time you need to be there, what time you need to leave. You know what's expected of you. You know what the goals are. You know what your function is and all of that. Like you have, you read that you realize it or not, you have a game plan for going to work every day. Well, you need the same thing when it comes to your healthy eating lifestyle. And most people don't have one. One day they're paleo, one day they're vegan, one day they're gluten free, one day they're. Um, low carb, one day they're Atkins, one day they're blood pressure, one day they're pescatarian, one day, like, it makes my head spin. Like, one day they're, it's just too much, right? So you need a strategic plan. And then you don't have to choose between it being delicious and nutritious. I like, I think it's kind of like, if I want something tasty, I'm going to have to eat something that's bad for me. If I want something that's good for me, I'm going to have to pick something that's not that delicious. That's also a lot. Like, listen, I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but the food I be eating be good. Okay, it be looking good. It be tasting good. Yes, I'm using poor English right now. And it's healthy. Like, it's right in line with my healthy eating game plan. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why the people want to lie to you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I'm going to give you a little conspiracy theory here. I'm not necessarily a conspiracy theorist. Okay. But I'm going to give you a, 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 a little bit of conspiracy theory, which is it is not profitable in the United States for you to be healthy. It's not profitable. It is profitable for you to want to be healthy, but can't really get healthy. It's profitable for you to buy lots of processed foods that would tell you that this is more convenient and easier to make you healthy. It is more profitable for people to just sustain your life with pills and medications than for you to actually be healthy. It's more profitable to have surgeries than it is to eat healthy. It's more profitable to get insulin and radiation and chemo and all these different things than it is to just say, hey, let's get you on a healthy eating game plan and let's figure out what's getting in the way and let's cure that. Now, I'm not saying some people don't need some of the things that I, I listed, okay? It's not an all or nothing. It's not necessarily black and white. But for the most part, you know, telling somebody, hey, listen, that candy bar that you love, you know, you might want to let that go and swap that out for something else. And then here's all the 5,000 other things you get to eat. If I tell you that, I can't really make money off you long term. You know what I'm saying? And it's why it's it like that's the truth. Let me tell you something that I found out. OK, I, this video has gone way left than what I thought it was going to go. But here it is. When I got diagnosed with cancer, I had a doctor tell me that for every new cancer patient that came into the system, they had a lifetime value of one million dollars to the medical industry. Minimal. A lifetime value. So that means that over the course of my life, from the moment of diagnosis until I go home to be with the Lord, okay, that there's the potential to make at a minimum a million dollars off of my diagnosis. You feel me? Like, and so you see all these cases of people popping up and being diagnosed with all these different illnesses, right? So, and that, and that can vary, like, how how much is it, a lifetime value to be, be diagnosed with diabetes or high blood pressure or high cholesterol. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And as I tell people, I've never seen a grocery bill higher than a doctor bill. Like when people tell me that healthy eating is expensive, I'd be like, girl, <laughs> go talk to somebody who's on prescription medication and ask them which one they would rather have. Go talk to somebody who has to go to the doctor all the time. Go talk to somebody who just buried a family member who died prematurely because they had congestive heart failure or they couldn't get their diabetes under control or they were obese and had, you know, medical complications related to that. Go talk to that person. Listen, I know that if you're watching this video in the past decade, you either know somebody or you have had to bury somebody who died from medical related illnesses that probably could have been pre prevented or if nothing else at least supported by a better health eating lifestyle i guarantee it i guarantee it with the way diabetes 
and high blood pressure and high cholesterol and all these things that are diet related illnesses. And you know, a lot of people tell me like, oh, some of this stuff is hereditary. No, the eating habits are hereditary. I'm just, I'm just, somebody got to say it. The eating habits are hereditary. Well, my whole family is like this because your whole family eat bad. Yeah, I said it. Only because I love you. Listen, I, I feel like for the past 10 years, I had a friend tell me that my brand was very vanilla. She was like, Evelyn, you, you, you're spicy in real life and you haven't given people the real spice. And I feel like I have done you a disservice by giving you the super soft vanilla. But I'm going to tell you right up, straight up right now, y'all, some of y'all know y'all got some family members who is out here eating trash. Some of y'all know y'all feeding trash to y'all family. Some of y'all know y'all eating trash on a regular basis and you know you want to get right and you know you want to do right and you've tried all the things and they haven't worked and you're still looking at me crazy and you haven't even gotten on the wait list for the Fun Food Academy. Like, I have had so many people in my DMs over the past decade asking me this, asking me that. And I'm like, where were you when I was doing part-time vegan? Where I was doing the de- de- detox? All these different things. Okay, I digress. Let me get off my high horse because I, I, I knew that I had to be ready. And you won't be ready until you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, literally. When you're tired of wearing Spanx because your thighs rub together. When you're tired of the number going up on the scale because you just can't seem to get it together. When you're tired of stress eating, when you're tired of the inside of jeans rubbing out and your thighs being exposed or being split because you know you put on some extra pounds. When you're tired of going to the doctor and they keep telling you to eat better but they don't help you. When you're tired of you know feeling guilty about when you do want to eat something that's not healthy. When when you're tired of you or somebody in your family got denied for life insurance because y'all were unhealthy when you are tired of seeing the last person die prematurely and you had to bury them or you had to start a GoFundMe or whatever the case may be when you're when you're sick and tired of that then you'll be ready until then I don't know what to tell you I, listen I had to get sick and tired of being sick and tired anyway so they lied they lied to you they did they did I'm here to tell you the truth because I care about you I don't know why this video went way left, okay? So I'm sorry about that. I got a little on my high horse. I got a little spicy. But you know it's because I love you and I care. And I'm just not playing no games in 2020. I'm not doing it. I'm coming for you in love. Let me tell you. I'm so off the subject, but I don't even care. So at my church, we talk a lot about like speaking the truth to people in love. And one of the things as a person that I struggle with is speaking the truth to people in love. I speak the truth. But sometimes I speak the truth straight up, no chaser. Like, and I, I have been that way my whole life. According to my mother, I came out the womb that way. I digress, okay? The point is, I don't have no chaser for you today. I just have the truth. They lie to you. I'm telling you the truth. You get to decide what to do with it. In three months, six months, nine months, don't be coming to me talking about Evelyn. I went to the doctor and blah, blah, blah. Because I will say a prayer for you. And I'm going to pray for you. And I will point you in the direction of some other resources. But this course will not be open again until 2021. What you waiting for? I think we think we have time. I think I said this in another video. We are under the illusion that we have time. That decade was long, but it went by by so fast. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, that's it. Uh, If you are curious about what's inside the Fun Food Academy, go to funfoodacademy.com. I'm sorry that this video got spicy, but I'm sorry I'm not sorry. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Peace.